Hey my friend, welcome to a new chordal lesson. Today let's play our major chords differently. If I were asking you to play a F sharp major chord or B flat or B major, you couldn't play them as open voicings, right? The ones that we first learned on guitar. They do not cover everything. They do not cover the sharps, the flats, and many, many chords. So your first instinct would be to play them like this, probably with bar chords. So you can play F sharp major like this, and uh, C sharp, and B, and so on. So it helps us to cover the whole fretboard and play any chord we want. But the problem when we play chords like these, uh, the example that I played at the beginning of the video, we end up playing what we call bad voice leading. Voice leading means that in a chord we have many notes and we can treat all of these notes as individual voices. In the same way that in a choir we have soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and if we look at all the notes they're singing at the same time vertically, we have a chord in here. But we can look horizontally too, and each of those voices, each singer has its own line. So that's what we call voice leading. It's where the note goes afterwards. And good voice leading most of the times is when we move in stepwise motion. We don't jump too much with the melody. Aside from the bass, which is uh, most of the time singing some jumps like to, to, to. Like it can happen with the bass note, but the other notes, most of the times they move in stepwise motion or they stay in place. So when I play something like this, something like this, let's say that this is my tenor voice. Uh, and that's gonna play to, to. So like it's not a great melody in itself, it's jumping too much, right? So we are going to play different kinds of voicings for our major chords that are going to give us much better voice leading. So let's say that I have a chord progression where I cannot use open chords. Let's say that I have B flat major, G minor, E flat, and C minor. So the first thing that you can do is play them like this, B flat, G minor, uh, E flat, and C minor. But once again, that's not a good melody that's jumping too much. We could play better voice leading. So what if instead of playing my B flat major like this, I played it like this. This is maybe a voicing that you have never thought of using before. So you are basically barring the third fret on the fourth, third and second strings and you play the root note with your pinky instead on the sixth fret. And this shape comes from the open G chord with the, the three fingers vo uh, version like this. If I remove my ring and my index and I play just the root note and the open fourth, third and second strings, then I have a complete G major chord like this. And if I want to bar it, I just have to shift that. Right? So that's how I get my B flat chord like this. And I find it much more comfortable than the big bar chord like this that always buzz. And if you are pushing too much, it's uh, really hard on the index finger. But when you're playing like this, for me, it's really, really relaxed, right? And for the E flat chord, instead of playing it like this or like this, what if you play it like this? So this one comes from the C shape, right? The C open shape. If I want to bar it, I have an invisible bar on my fret zero. If, if I want to shift it, I can play it like this. Right? And I don't even, you can bar all of it if you want. 
it does an inversion of it, but I, w I prefer to play it only with four fingers, four notes like these. So if you alternate between the B flat chord and the E flat, you don't have to move a lot, right? Instead of... So when I'm playing it like this, the voice leading, it's like... It's like real big jumps, right? For each individual note, but when I play it like this... The top note is doing... It's a... Just one fret different, the note on the third string... Uh, stays in place. So when a note stays in place, that's good voice leading. And the note on the fourth string does da da, which is a great melody. So this is what is voice leading. Each string, each voice is individually not going too far and that gives us a great result. So if I want to do my entire B flat, G minor, E flat and C minor chord progression, I could play it like this. Then I can play my regular G minor bar chord, then E flat, like this, and then C minor. Once again, it's super smooth on all voices. If I focus on the top note, ta, 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 ta. if I focus on the middle note, do, 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 do. and if I focus on the fourth string, ta, ta, All of the voices are moving as less as possible and it's a super smooth result compared to So sometimes it just takes this right just to play those little uh, major chords this way and this way instead and it smoothens out everything in your chord progression. So keep those two shapes of major chords and think about using them more often. And if you want to go further with me, I have a free mini course on my website, first link in the description box. And in this course, the first exercise, I'm showing you many kinds of chord progressions that you can read, and I'm showing you how to play them in restricted fretboard areas so that you develop the habit of of jumping less with your chords. So if you want to develop more of that better voice leading, staying in the same area with your chord voicings, uh, this is a really, really cool trick that I show you in my free mini course in the first module. Once again, you can enroll for free first link in the description box. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, au revoir.